Once you perform your search in SPSU Hive Search, you'll reach what's called the results screen or the results page. And that's exactly what you'll find. You'll find the results of your search. And here you'll see over here, this box right here is called the bread box. This will tell you the number of results that you have. So for searching for digital culture as a keyword, I had 47,021 results but I haven't made any limiting choices. So I could go down here and I tell it to change the year. I could change it to scholarly peer reviewed journals or for full text. So let's say I don't really wanna go all the way back to 1574 for digital culture. I wanna put it forward to 2001. And I do want scholarly journals and I update that. Now I'm going from 47,000 to 12,720. So that shortened it quite a bit. I could also limit it to source types. Here we have academic journals, trade publications, magazines, reviews, reports. I could click on show more and I'll show there are also conference materials here. I want to do academic journals. That's probably not going to make a big difference. Yeah, 11,337 because most scholarly peer reviewed journals are going to be academic journals. I could also limit it by subject. And again, you've got your show more option. I'm looking at digital culture. Yeah, I want digital libraries as a subject. So digital culture as a keyword with digital libraries as the subject. Now I'm down to 178. So that's how you can shorten it. You can go from something really big like 47,000 all the way down to something smaller like 178, which really isn't that bad. You can also look at the various publishers. Some of you may recognize some of these, American Library Association, Emerald, Taylor & Francis. You can limit it by publication, various journal titles. You can limit it by language. You can limit it by geography. You can also limit it by content provider. If you're performing a search that has book results, which I got rid of when I chose scholarly peer reviewed journals, you would have another facet here called location, and that would limit it by the location in the library, such as the reference section or the architecture section. But we don't have that in this particular example because I had earlier limited it just to journals, which got rid of all of the books. And then you have all of your sources here in the middle. And this is where you can see if there's full text available, it'll tell you right here. If it is not available in full text, you'll have this option to find it in another location. That just brings up the find it that everybody's used to from Galileo. What it'll do is it'll search all of the other databases in Galileo and let you know if it's available. And it looks like it is not available. Then nobody could find library quarterly. So that would be something you might have to request through interlibrary loan if it was something that I wanted. And um, for most cases, there here is the option to request via interlibrary loan. You click on that link. It will pre-populate the information in the bottom. So it'll type in the article title and author for you. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to type your information in at the top. There is no way to pre-populate that. So you're gonna have to type that in every time you make an interlibrary loan request. If it had been a book, for instance, that earlier page that we had, here are these books. And it would give you the catalog item and the call number and whether or not it had been checked out. And if you click on retrieve catalog item, that will open up the catalog record of the book. So you could see it in the SPSU library catalog. You also have these magnifying glasses here. If you hover your mouse over that magnifying glass, it'll give you more information. If there is an abstract available for the item, this is an ebook, so it doesn't really have an abstract. But if you scroll down to a journal title, it'll give you the abstract. So you can see the abstract without having to go into the actual detailed record. And then over here on our right, these are the various widgets that we have, as well as the integrated search connectors. Integrated search is a way of searching multiple databases. Right now we're searching the Hive Search, which is an EBSCO discovery service. And you can see we had 47,176. Com Abstracts is a different database. It had 210 results. ProQuest Research Library had 70,367. ProQuest Dissertations and Theses, you can see the results. And ProQuest Newsstand, those are going to be newspaper articles and you can see the number of articles. You can bounce back and forth between the different ones by choosing them and deselecting the older version and clicking update. And this center column will change. Those are all the newspaper articles. The other options you have here in the widget section are various related images. These are images related to digital culture. The reference chat, if you want to ask us any questions, just click on reference chat. It'll give you a pop-up window. You can resize it to whatever size you want. Start typing in your questions. So let's say you're not finding what you want about digital culture. 
Just type in your question, hit enter, and one of the librarians will answer it. There are also Flickr images that searches Flickr and returns the results. For more information, just click on Find More, and it'll take you over to Flickr. Films on Demand brings up the Films on Demand search box, and you can search by segment or by title in the Films on Demand database. Same thing for Literature Resource Center. It brings up a search box to search inside Literature Resource Center. You type in your search, and it'll open it up in a separate tab. Statistics sources lists st statistical information, websites, and other places you can find free statistics online. LibGuides lets you search our LibGuide site. LibAnswers lets you send us a question via the LibAnswers site. Distance learning collects sources that we believe will help distance learners. Research help provides LibGuides and other videos and assistance that we think would help anybody researching. And then finally, we have our information videos at the end. Just click on these, and this should get you going with knowing how to navigate the results screen.